O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven and hev of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is the exalted. His splendor is over the earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the wisdom of Susanna. The two elders stood up before the people and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears, she looked up towards heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, while we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the garden doors, and dismissed the maids. Then a young man who was hiding there came to her and lay with her. We were in the corner of the garden, and we saw this wickedness. We ran to them. Although we saw them embracing, we could not hold the man because he was stronger than we are, and he opened the doors and got away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things, things we testify. Because they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O oh, eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false witness, false evidence against me, and now I am to die though I have done none of these wicked things that they charged against me. The Lord heard her cry. Just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young man, lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. 
the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. A certain ruler asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your mother and father. He replied, I have kept all these things since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, There is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor. and You shall have treasure treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, then who can be saved? He replied, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. Then Peter said, look, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not get back very much more in this age and the age to come eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Marina the monk. Marina was born in present-day Lebanon in the 5th century. She was the only child of her parents, and her mother died when she was still a young girl. Her father refused to remarry and instead raised her himself until she was a teenager. At that point, he hoped to find her a husband and then retire to live a life of a monk. Marina, however, rejected this plan, saying, Why would you save your own soul at the cost of destroying mine? Instead, she shaved off her hair and exchanged her clothing for men's clothes. When her father saw her determination, he relented. Selling all of their possessions, they went together to the monastic settlement in the Kadisha Valley, where he introduced her as his son, Marinos. After 10 years of living the monastic life together, the father died. Marinos continued to live at the monastery without revealing his identity to anyone. In time, however, a local girl who had become pregnant accused Marinos of fathering her child. Rather than respond to this accusation with the obvious denial, Marinos accepted this responsibility rather than reveal his secret or subject the girl to further reproach. When the child was born, the infant was given to Marinos to raise at the monastery. He accepted the boy as though he was truly his own son and bore patiently all of the scorn and abuse that the other monks heaped upon him for his alleged violation of his monastic vows. After many years, Marinos also died, but it was only then when the monks prepared, went to prepare the body for burial that they discovered that it was actually the body of a woman who had obviously been innocent of the charges of having fathered a child. The monks and villagers lamented their false accusation and judgment. And after their repentance, many miracles were performed at Marina's tomb. While some aspects of this story may be legendary, there are numerous accounts in the early Christianity of women disguising themselves as men and entering male monasteries. And this is one of the examples that is considered to be the most historically reliable. Marina Marinos is particularly venerated today in Lebanon, Cyprus, and Italy, usually under the name of Marina the Monk. Lord, you have now set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see. 
a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was, is now, is what as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may but depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we, be bound, we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed John the Divine, Blessed Marina the monk, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all of our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. Give us grace, Lord God, to refrain from judgments about the sins of others, that, like your servant, Marina the monk, we may hold fast to the path of discipleship in the midst of unjust judgments. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. We remember this night all who are dear to us, all in our parish prayer list, all of those in need, and all who have died. During this time of pandemic, we pray for those directly infected by the virus, for those at high risk of infection, for those in quarantine, the shut-in, and the infirm, and for those whose lives have been claimed by the virus, for all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, for first responders, for service industry workers, and for those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources. For our schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff. For all scientists and those working to find a cure. We entrust each of these to your never failing love and care for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing things, better things for them than we can ask for or imagine.
O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Break the systemic racism that pervades every segment of our society. Unite us in the bonds of love and work through the struggle to accomplish your purposes on earth as we strive to enact a just society that all, at last, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us at the Chapel of St. John the Divine. We invite you to the observance of a Holy Lent. To find out more about the chapel, please visit our website at chapelsjd.org. Here you may find out more about the Episcopal Church, rewatch a service, make a financial contribution, and more. Please join us on Sundays at 10 a.m. for Holy Eucharist, and on Wednesdays at 5.15 p.m., and now Fridays at 5.15 p.m. for evening prayer. Our live streams begin five minutes before the service begins. Again, thank you. <laughs>